Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we explore the details of a photo using MacFun Intensify Pro. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Mon nom est Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France, and I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to subscribe to my newsletter and get the raw file of this episode, a beautiful raw file taken years ago in Montmartre, France. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, in last episode, I showed you how to make a selective black and white photo using Lightroom and Lightroom only. This week, I'm going to show you again another product from MacFun, a great company. This time, it's Intensify Pro. We're going to take this photo, that's the before photo, and that's the final result, where we're going to get really a lot more contrast and details and selective details. You will see. It's a pretty cool plugin. At the end of this tutorial, there is a presentation of my new course coming out called Landscape Retouching. Check it out. It's a cool course, and it includes digital blending, luminosity blending, all the techniques that I know about landscape retouching. But for now, let's go to Paris and Montmartre and let me show you how we can use this Intensify Pro plugin to explode details and contrast in this photo. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using a plugin called Intensify Pro. If you want to get that plugin, all you have to go is go to my website, photosearch.com, go to News, Mac Fun, and there you can get the plugin with 10%. I advise you to buy the package called the Creative Plus and use Photo Surge when you check out. This way you can get an additional 10%. If you buy Creative Plus, you get all their planning and they're really worth the money with a 30% discount plus my discount. Uh, if you only want to get today's plugin, well, it's Intensify. All you have to do is click here on Get Started and don't forget to use Photo Surge to get the 10% off and you help me support my podcast and all the free stuff that I do. All right, let's get to it. All right, so this week I'm going to continue to explore Mac Fun uh, plugins for Lightroom, and uh, which are only Mac plugins, they're not for Windows. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that in the first tutorial. And I'm going to take this photo. This photo I shot years ago, I think I shot this uh, in 2008 uh, in Montmartre, very nice street. And um, uh, they have a plugin called Intensify Pro, which really gets your contrast and your details. Uh, to a level which I have rarely seen, and I want to show I want to show you how I can apply this to the f to uh, this photo. So first, I'm going to do my classic Lightroom retouched. Uh, as usual, I shot this for the highlights. If you look at it, uh, it's pretty dark, but we can still have details in the highlights. So if I do my workflow of opening up the shadows and bring down the highlights, uh, and then doing the whites, uh, holding down the Alt key, moving to the right, uh, the whites and the blacks. Uh, we get a you know a better contrast already. Now let's tackle the white balance. The white balance. I want to make it. I want to make the whole photo a bit warmer. So I think I'm going to go for shade. Yeah, shade is kind of cool. And I always add a bit of magenta when I'm on shade. I think that's cool. Now the 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 whole sky is too. Um, how can I say? It's too bright. So let's take a graded filter. Let's lose uh, use exposure minus exposure and let's make a little filter here. Okay, now one thing I don't like about that, you see what it does here, it makes the top of these buildings pretty dark. So a little trick to make this less is to open up the shadows in the same time. When you open up the shadows in the same time, what it does, it still does a bit the gradient, but it leaves a bit off, uh, you know, the, 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 the building here. So that's kind of cool. Okay, and I think I'm going to make the overall photo even a, a little bit darker. I'm going to add some clarity to this one. And I think, um, I think, uh, oh yeah, two things. I'm going to unable the profile correction and I'm going to remove chromatic aberration and use auto uh, to make the photo straight. So already it's quite a change. If you look at it, let me show you the before and after backslash key before after. It's already a major change, but I'm going to take it one more notch. Now, this was taken, I think, with a 5D Mark I. So the way they, they, back in these days, the ISO were not amazing. So because I'm going to do some heavy details with retouching, I think I'm just going to lower a little bit the noise reduction, like uh, around 30, and I'm going to put my sharper in around 70. Uh, I have this rule where I take 100 and I deduct whatever I put in uh, in luminance. That's just my basic, basic uh, noise sharpening. But then I also do my masking with the, uh, using the um, masking tool, moving it to the right until everything is dark. Okay, so now 
we've got a basic retouching. I think I want to make it a bit darker. I want to increase the contrast and make it a little bit darker. Okay, maybe even even a bit darker and then I'm going to relight it. I'm going to relight it using a brush. So I'm taking a brush, going on the exposure and I'm going to relight this, relight a bit this wall uh, and relight a bit this wall. You know, plus make a bit like rays of light in the same time. Ooh, way too much, way too much. Uh, all right, something like that. Okay, that's that's you know that's usually what I do in Lightroom. Now let's take up let's take it up one more notch. I'm gonna right click, edit, and go to edit in Intensify Pro. This uh, new plugins for Mac fun. Uh, they are for Mac and they're really fun. No, it's really cool stuff, and because they they have tools that I didn't find anywhere else, and let me show you why on this photo. So it's already pretty nice photo. I mean, we've got drama. It's totally the type of photo I like, you know. But I want to go a little further. Um, I'm I'm not gonna do the color temperature and the basic tune because I've done this already in Lightroom. So I'm gonna move to Pro Contrast now. Pro Contrast is their own way of doing contrast, and I actually find that it's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you how it works. If I move this to the right, I always start with the mid-tones. If I move it to the right, it does add contrast, but it does it in a way, uh, in a less destructive way, in a more intelligent way than regular contrast. Now check it out, just that slider uh, with before, after, before, after. You see how everything is more saturated? It's kind of cool, but it's not finished. They have another single half offset. Basically, you see it's dark here and it's light here. What it does is that it offsets the contrast to the dark, uh, opening up the dark on the left or making it darker on the right. So I'm gonna offset it a little bit on the right to, uh, to so that my contrast is a bit darker, okay? Um, you have the same thing with the highlights and the shadows. So let's look what it's doing on the highlights. Yeah, it's making my sky even more interesting. So I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna play around with offset. Yeah, I'm gonna offset it. So now I've got a bit of a darker sky uh, actually, this is not too dark, so let me just offset this a little bit back. Maybe back it off, back it off a little bit. Yeah, you have to be careful. Okay, shadows. Let's see shadows. Contrast in the shadows. No, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna touch that. So, before the contrast and after, it's already. I mean, I thought it was already pretty cool, but now it's really. Uh, I don't know the way the, the way they compress the contrast and the colors. I think is really cool. Okay, now, the other thing that's cool about this plugin is that it's got layers. Now, I'm happy with what I did. So, I did my basic contrast on layer zero, right? So, I'm naming it that way. I'm going to click on plus. And now, I'm going to deal with the next panel, which is structure. Now, structure, I'm going to start again, always starts with the mid-tones. So, I start with the mid-tones. And um, I like what it does. I like what it does, but not everywhere. It actually brings up a lot of noise here in the walls. So I'm gonna back it down. Let's check out the highlights, see what it does. Now, I like what, I like what the highlights does. Uh, look, it only influences the sky and it does some pretty good job there. So I think I'm gonna use the highlights. I don't push it too much because if you push it too much, what can happen? Uh, if you push it too much, you can get some, some artifacts in the sky. But it's actually doing a pretty good job. I'm pushing it a lot. Look, check it out before, after I'm getting back all bunch of details in the sky. Okay, oh well, it's a bit grainy here, so I'm gonna back it down a little bit. So it's a bit less aggressive. Now the cool thing about it is that if you, if you don't like what it does here and you like what it does here, well, check it out. Let me put it back to fit on the windows. I can just take this brush and you see, by default, the layer, what I've done here is being applied everywhere, right? But if I start brushing here, well, it only affects the clouds here. It made a mask just for the clouds. So I'm going to call this clouds, and I'm happy with the clouds. So now I'm going to go plus one more layer, okay? And this time I want to tackle this part of the photo. So I'm going to go back to structure and see what it does. Now, you see mid-tones, I like what it does here. I don't like what it does there. So mid-tones is fine. And I might add some shadows here. Um, mid-tones. Now softness is a really cool slider. You see, you can add this sort of structure clarity and then you can soft it by going to the left or to the right on it. So I'm gonna soft it a little bit. I'm only looking what it does here. I'm not, I'm not caring about the rest because I'm again gonna use a brush. 
So I have the brush which is active. Now I'm happy with it does, but I, I just want it here on the foreground. So now I'm just going to paint on the foreground and it only is because I don't like what it does on that white wall. Maybe here a little bit, you know, not, not so much. So I, I want to take it out here. I can just take the rubber, uh, the eraser, I'm sorry, oops, fit. And uh, I just can click here. So it's going to take out the effect there. So now I have done, check it out with this layer. All I have done is putting a lot of, you know, uh, details on the, on the first step of my photo. Check it out before and after from the start. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to call this uh, foreground structure because that's what that layer does. If you think it's too much, you can even lower the opacity of the layers, which I might do a little bit on this one. Okay, and let's, I'm, I'm gonna show you one more thing. It's got a lot of options, but I'm just gonna show you one more thing which I really like is the, um, the detail section. Okay, so let's do one more layer and let's look what detail is gonna do now. We've done, we've done pro contrast, we've done structure, let's look at details. So same thing, I'm gonna go for medium. So, I th that's really what's going to give this sort of HDR look if you're going for that. I'm not a huge fan of HDR look anymore. I used to, but I, I got sick of it. So, uh, you know, like if you go like this, you really got like sort of a grungy HDR. I don't necessarily want that on this one. Uh, however, let's see. Um, in the shadows, well, let's see, what can I do on this one? Yeah. I like what it does on the left wall here, the, the, the small details, just on the left wall. So you know what, I'm gonna put it this way. Same thing, I have my brush and I'm just brushing on this wall. So that layer is only gonna affect this wall. So I've got a very, you know, uh, detailed foreground and it gets a bit furrier in the background. All right, and um, vignette, they have a lot of options with vignette. I think I'm gonna add some vignette on this one. Uh, I'm actually, hold on, I'm just gonna create a new layer because now you see what happened is I used the vignette but I had a mask on, that's why nothing was happening. So this one I'm gonna call it sort of left wall. It's a good idea to name your layers, always a good idea. All right, and uh, left wall. Now this one more, I think it's a bit too strong this one, I'm also gonna lower the opacity of this one. Okay, layer four, layer four, I'm gonna go for, um, Let's see, micro sharpness. Now, micro sharpness, you have to go at 100%. And what, what it does, it does an amazing sharpness. It really is cool. So uh, you, you should do it really at the end and on whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna put a little bit of it here, make it a bit more sharp. Let's see before and after. Before, after, before. Yeah, it's a bit more sharp. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Okay, so I'm gonna call this micro sharpness. So I love to use their layers because, uh, you know, I'm not in, in Photoshop, it's sort of a checklist uh, to use. Well, oh, okay, I cannot create more layers. It's limited to five layers, so that's fine. I'm gonna use the last layer for what, it was, what I wanted else because there's no mask on it. So on this one, I just wanted, I'm gonna click on fit and I'm gonna add a bit of vignette. I could do it in Lightroom, I could, but I like uh, the f different options they have, feathering, luminosity, you know, I just, while I'm here, I might always do it. I, this, honestly, I could do in Lightroom, okay? And and voila, so I I really, I think, took this photo to a new level, check it out, that's the before photo, that's the after, before photo. I got all the details here in the sky, I got a lot of details in the foreground, and if I print this photo, it will just, you know, make it even more uh, uh, strong. I can always also correct the, the temperature. Maybe it's gone a little warm, so I can maybe add a little bit of blue to it, uh, you know, or a little tint, let me see. No, I think I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine how it was. Anyway, so again, the before and the after. It, it's uh, intensify is really gonna intensify your details and the fact that you can use it with this brush, this workflow with, with layers is so cool. It's Mac only, and for people that only have Lightroom and don't have Photoshop, uh, and honestly, the way, for example, I used to go to Photoshop and do la, uh, like what I call the explosion of details. If you type search remedy explosion of details on YouTube, you will see what I mean. It's like a different layers that I use to make the details really come out. I won't use that anymore. I would use that plugin because it does it better, and I don't even have to go to Photoshop. So I think this plugin is really amazing for people that don't have Photoshop and have Lightroom. And even if you do have Photoshop, it is there. It can do things that, of course, anybody could, you know, you could eventually do in Photoshop, but so much easier. 
and and probably uh, probably would be really hard to do exactly that in Photoshop. So really cool plugin. Check out their stuff, MacFun, and uh, I, I, I really advertise their things because I believe in it and I use it every day now. So uh, let's. Oh, so now uh, here is my little presentation on my new course on landscape that I just finished. One of my most complete course on landscape, including the use of luminosity mask. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called Landscape Retouching. This course is a bit special. It has really all my technology on landscape retouching in Lightroom and in Photoshop. Some of the projects are going to be very easy, just Lightroom and Lightroom only. Some of them are going to be digital blendings, pretty easy just using layers. Some of them are going to be more advanced using Luminosity Mask, a very cool advanced technique for hard situation of blending. In all, you have 10 projects. There is 20 raw files. I have also a special release discount if you purchase this within the next days. All right, mesdames et messieurs, here you have it, my landscape retouching course. I hope you love it. And I will see you in another video. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.